Hey there, I am back with another deck review and today we're going to be looking at Overlook from Art of Play. Now this deck is probably going to be released at some point directly by Art of Play, but as of now the only way you can get a hold of this is through the mystery decks from Art of Play. And that's how I got mine. You may have seen the video on my channel a few days ago where I opened up the six that I received and this was in the sixth and final one that I opened. So very excited to share this one with you guys. Let's get right into it. All right, so the name Overlook is a reference to the hotel from the famous 1977 novel by Stephen King called The Shining. It was later adapted for a now classic movie by Stanley Kubrick. And oddly enough, the movie was pretty much panned by critics at the time. People thought it was terrible, it was boring. Uh, it was up for a couple of Razzies, both for worst director and worst actress. But since then, it's sort of been reevaluated by people and now is seen as one of the classics of the horror genre. Movie I absolutely love and one that if you haven't seen, definitely recommend going to check that out. Uh, but that's the inspiration for the deck itself. The movie or the book, whichever way you want to look at it, uh, follows the story of Jack Torrance as he takes on a job as the caretaker of the Overlook Hotel. Uh, he brings his family along for the winter uh, for this basically isolated hotel where nobody can get up there during the winter. And over the course of that time, he sort of uncovers some of the dark secrets of the hotel uh, and basically things turn really, really bad to say the least. Now, I'm going to try to get through this review without giving, a, giving away anything about the movie. Uh, we'll see how well I do. Apologies in advance if I give any spoilers. I'll try to avoid it. But let's start by looking at the tuck case. And it's a really simple design. It's done in this matte green, kind of a forest green color cardstock. And all of the design is just done through embossing. There's no ink or anything like that on here. The front design here takes on one of the iconic features of the hotel, and that's the hedge maze out in front. And you can see that maze pattern complete with the larger hedges there in the center, kind of your goal of the maze. So you've got the entrance down here at the bottom, and it is an actual maze. You can work your way through it, uh, and it plays a significant role in the book and film. So that's the beautiful design on the front and get that close up and see that really well done, clean embossing all the way through. The sides of the tuck are completely blank as is the bottom. The back has basically that same maze and then the top also blank. And then you'll see this really striking long thin red tuck seal. It's done in a metallic finish uh, with a little bit of gold on it. You got the keyhole inside of a hexagon at the top and then the line stretching down read void if removed. Now, I will say I am incredibly curious as to whether this tuck seal is hiding something underneath. I haven't looked myself. I did check to see if there was any embossing because you can look at that from the inside of the tuck and there is none. So I'm really curious to know if there's anything under here. Maybe somebody gets a hold of this and is braver than me and peels that off. I did not. Uh, but as you open it up, completely blank on the inside the inner flaps the interior of the tuck case uh, finishing out a really clean and very mysterious tuck case i really like it i love the design on this one i think they did a great job giving an elegant and yet mysterious tuck case I like that they didn't put any words on it pretty much anywhere at all either so that's the tuck case but let's take a look at the cards and here's the back design and this is my favorite part of the entire deck this back design, if you've seen the movie, you'll immediately recognize it. Uh, it is the carpet design from the floor of the hotel. And there's some iconic scenes that are filmed on this carpet, and it's just such a striking and bold design. It's originally a design from the 1960s by an interior designer named David Hicks. He called it Hicks Hexagons. So that's the name of the design, and Stanley Kubrick later used it in his film. A uh, very bold, bright pattern, very much kind of 70s vibe to it. You've got that orange color, red in the center, and then gray lines, giving this sort of repeated hexagon pattern all the way down. It's a borderless design, which just helps you to appreciate just the expanse of that beautiful uh, design uh, all the way to the edges. Now, I will say 
it is not a one way or a two way back design. This is a one way back design. You'll see if you look at the red, which kind of lines up with the corners on the top, but doesn't at the bottom. The wish it could have been incorporated into a two way back design. I personally would have preferred it, but it's such a beautiful and striking back design that I don't mind it that much at all. So there's the back design, love what was done here. Now you also get four extra cards. None of them are jokers in the true sense. I suppose you could use any ones of these as jokers, but they're not your classic kind of jokers. They're all just sort of extra ambiance cards, I'll call them. The first one features kind of a color swapped version of the maze. So you've got the orange background with the maze in green, basically the same design we saw on the front of the tech case. The second one is this really cool scenic image, kind of in an engraving style. Uh, and it's basically the exterior of the hotel or the e exterior scenery, I should say, of the hotel. The hotel is set up in the Rockies. And so you can see the Rocky Mountains, kind of a stream running through and those beautiful trees. So kind of a monochromatic scene that you might see outside of the hotel. The third one is a completely blank red card. Now, I won't, again, try to not give away too much, but I will say there is an iconic scene from the movie where, which features a ridiculous amount of blood. They had to use 200 gallons of fake blood for the scene where blood comes gushing out of the elevator. And so I think this card is meant to be an homage to that famous scene. And then the final one is an all black card with a simple quote in orange in the middle. It says, no man is an island entire of itself. Uh, it's a quote from a poem originally by John Doerr, and the movie is, or the uh, the movie is really a testament to isolation and the effect that it has on the main character. And so, it's a really fitting quote that kind of delves into some of the psychological aspects of the movie. So, kind of a cool fourth card. Now, the rest of the deck. So here's your Ace of Spades. Again, very little writing or ad copy anywhere on this one. I like that a lot. Uh, the spade pip in the center continues to follow that maze motif. So you have the maze with kind of a lock uh, there as the central element. Even nice little attention to detail has an entry point right there at the bottom of the spade pip. Nice big black spade pip with that maze design. I like it. I love the continuation of the theme. I love the simplicity and uh, how clean that this comes across. You do have a slightly custom font on the index in the corner and a slightly custom pip, but nothing too out of the ordinary. Most of the number cards are also fairly standard. You'll see a little bit of extra flair and shape to the spade pips and all the pips on this one, but otherwise, pretty standard all the way through the rest of the deck. It's meant to be a functional deck, maybe one you'd use for magic or gameplay. And so they kept the pips and the indices on these pretty much standard. And here are the court cards. Now this one, I, I don't know what I was expecting, uh, but they are basically just modified and recolored standard courts. These are standard bicycle courts, and they're, they chose a really interesting color scheme on these. It's red, green, and that orange color that we've seen go all the way through. For me personally, the red and green is a little bit dominant on this one. I wish it hadn't come across so much uh, green. I think that's, you know, it's, I'm not a big fan of that color choice. Uh, I'm not sure what colors I might have picked. Maybe just completely mirror the colors on the back design of the cards or something like that, which would have meant maybe removing some of that green. But this is the color redesign that we get. Overall, I think it's still a well-executed recoloring. Uh, you know, with it being this intellectual property, I wish they'd maybe done something a little bit more custom with the court cards, but they chose to stick with really the standard courts, keeping it a really functional deck. So we'll flip really quickly through the rest of it. Here's your red quartz, that deep red color. Nothing too special on these. Again, you get that slight flare in the pips, but nothing out of the ordinary. And then the rest of the quartz, like I said before, are all gonna be just those standard recolorings. There's your club quartz. And then down through the club number cards. And our final quartz are going to be your heart quartz. And there are those. And then down through your heart number cards to finish with the Ace of Hearts. So that's the deck, fairly standard. Uh, it handles beautifully. It's on that nice, thin, crushed stock that Dan and Dave are so fond of, uh, and it fans beautifully. It looks fantastic and fans with that big, bold color scheme. 
uh, just well suited for fans. So if you wanted to use this for cardistry, I think it'd be great. And that gets down into uses. You know, I think with the handling and that color seam would look great for cardistry, like I just said, uh, but it's really, I think, meant to be a functional deck. Gameplay, magic are really gonna be where this is gonna stand out. Uh, you'll also, though, if you're a fan of the movies, uh, and just a you know fan of film or horror in general, you'll want to have the Overlook deck in your collection. So that's it. That is the look at Overlook. Definitely a beautifully designed deck. The back design alone worth the price of admission. Tuck case great. Wish maybe there'd been a little bit more customization on the deck, but all in all, I think a really well executed deck. Very clean. I like it a lot. So. Uh, thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe for more deck reviews and unboxings. Let me know what else you want to see. And if you haven't yet, go vote for the Free the Pip Friday selection. Just a few days left before I uh, kind of close it out and get ready for Friday's video. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you for the next one.